One of the questions I'm asked probably more than any other is what can I do about my dark under eye circles? And I get far too many of those questions that I can probably ever answer. Uh, what I always want to do is sort of like a consultation because there are different types of under eye dark circles and knowing kind of what causes them and what treatments are available will also help you to think about how to cover them. So this video is just gonna be about the causes and the treatments that are available. Now, um, there are two different types of under eye dark circles. I'll start with the first, the probably, well, not most common, they're both really common. Um, and that's the sort of purpley blue ones that you see, the reddish purpley blue ones. Now, these ones are caused by leaky capillaries and that sounds horrible, doesn't it? But it's not as bad as it sounds. It's just um, the capillary walls that allow haemoglobin to sort of seep out. And when haemoglobin oxidizes, it becomes iron oxide rich. And what you're actually seeing is the iron oxide is that it takes on that really purpley blue color. And when you look at your face and you see that you have those under your eyes, what you're actually seeing is you're seeing the capillary loops in the dermis, which is why it's really probably more common in pale skins because you've got that translucency and the skin under the eyes is very um, thin anyway. So what you're seeing is what what's called hemosiderin, which is what happens when it um, haemoglobin oxidizes. Now, there are different reasons for it. Genetic, which some people just have it genetically and it doesn't make any difference what they're going to do. Their parents had it and unfortunately um, that is the case for lots and lots of people. Then there are people who are just have really bad lifestyles and who never sleep and don't eat properly and really don't look after themselves and then again it can um, this can really exaggerate it, even if you're not genetically prone to it the whole thing about sleep though I think it's really probably very very annoying for someone who's got it genetically to be told oh if you just have a good night's sleep you know you'll be fine and really the the the, the lack of sleep isn't actually ca causing the hemosiderin it's more likely to be the fact that when your body's really under stress or which can be you know lack of sleep or just general stressful situations your blood is diverted to your internal organs because that's you know they need it the most and what happens is less blood comes to the surface of the skin so the rest of your face will look a lot more paler no matter what you know skin color you are you look quite drawn and pale and this will emphasize a lot any purpleness or blueness under the eyes so it can often be that um, that's really the reason that you, you notice it a lot if you don't sleep. It's more that the blood is going to the vital organs. So you've got so far two causes of the purple and bluish type of under eye shadow. Genetic and the leaky capillaries which are caused by just stress on the body. You know, very stressful situations, bad diet, etc. The other situation that causes it is just general ageing. And um, the reason that happens is because... We have oxidative stress on our skin, you know, through UVA, free radicals. Your skin just starts to break down as you get older. And this also happens to the capillary wall. So as you get older, you're more likely to have leaky capillaries just because that's what happens, unfortunately. Something else that really will affect how dark the circles are under your eyes is the shape of your face, your bone structure, if you like, your fundamental bone structure, the physiology of your face. So you find that this whole area is just naturally sunken because that's just the shape of your face and the shape of your cheekbones and the way everything's put together. And in that situation, you'll really be able to sort of, you know, it'll really sort of catch a shadow naturally. It's just the, the, the way your face is put together. So that can be something that will give the appearance of a really dark shadow, um, having that sort of very sunken, naturally very sunken area. So the next type of under eye shadow is due to pigmentation under the eyes and this is more the browny um, dark almost yellowy almost greeny type of shadows you see people with interestingly enough a study was done which showed that women particularly Indian and Asian girls that are genetically disposed to the darker pigmentation under the eyes they're much less likely to get fine lines and wrinkles till much later in life. Whereas the Caucasian women that were tested, much more likely to get the fine lines and the wrinkles, um, but not to get the pigmentation. It definitely points to a melanin thing and it is, a, it is definitely a genetic factor.
when I was doing 10 Years Younger on television, I had one lady that did have extremely, extremely dark um, pigmentation under her eyes, They're completely brown, this whole area. And um, she was actually Caucasian, so it's quite unusual to have such intense um, pigmentation under there. And we actually resorted to IPL, which did have a really great effect. So if it's something that's a real problem and, um, you know, you're just beside yourself, if you find a really good dermatologist, IPL, I found, had quite a good um, effect in breaking down the pigmentation. I think she had about three sessions and it was really, really greatly reduced. So let's talk about treatments and particularly ingredients that are good for pigmentation under the eyes. Now, the most sort of extreme one is hydroquinone, and this is something that you can get from doctors and dermatologists. It's not available over the counter, certainly not in this country anyway. Um, it really does lighten pigmentation. That is a fact. However, it does have quite a few side effects, one of which is that it almost kills off and destroys the cells that are responsible for creating the melanin, so it leaves your skin a little bit vulnerable, and lots of people prefer not to go there. Um, but in extreme cases, I guess it, it could be helpful. The, there are lots of alternatives which are much you know, easier to come by and um, less extreme. The first one is vitamin C. Vitamin C has a really good lightening effect on any kind of pigmentation, so whether it's age spots or under eye area. And um, this can be found in lots of creams. One of the ones I particularly like is the Murad Essential C. I like this one because it's got a very good environmental shield. It has a good, very good key ingredients and it's protective against the UVA and the UVB, which is really, really key. Other ingredients to look out for are licorice extract and kojic acid. Now, when I spoke to Dr. Tom Mamone, who's head of skin physiology and pharmacology at Clinique, he was really into licorice extract and really believed that all the studies they've done prove that it really does have a very good lightening effect under the eyes and it's certainly in a lot of the Clinique creams. Kiwi is also good um, and then something called Sephora which isn't Sephora like the shop it's Sephora S-O-P-H-O-R-A um, another good natural lightening ingredients and Arbutin as well which is um, another way another ingredient so if you look out for all of those things and really think about trying to lighten up pigmentation with the cream protect it stop any future pigmentation happening you know try and protect wear sunglasses if you're in bright sunlight think about just protecting your skin and really looking after it um, if you if, if you are prone that way then you know prevention is always better than cure so treatments and ingredients that are good for hemosiderin and leaky capillaries. First one would probably be vitamin K. Certainly in this country, it's a drug and um, people don't use it in cosmetic preparations because if they were to, they'd have to prove it, prove the claims. So it doesn't really exist, I don't think in Europe at all. I know in some places in America, they have vitamin K. In, in eye creams and things and I think there is some research on it but I think like everything else the under eye area I don't feel has been particularly well researched yet it feels like cosmetic companies have spent so long on wrinkles and fine lines and now kind of age spots I think the next really big area of development and growth will be on the under eye area so but that's certainly one ingredient is probably going to come to the forefront a little bit more going forward and when I spoke to Jeff Murad from, from Murad, he felt that um, trace minerals and B vitamins particularly were very good for the under eye area. So anything that's antioxidant and has trace vitamins, B vitamins, etc. And also haloxyl has um, been studied. And again, there has been really good results with that. That's something which is in number seven's Protect and Perfect. And... Um, I had a really good chat with Mike Bell, who's amazing. Um, I love him. He's the kind of, I don't even know what his official title is. I think he's sort of big, big cheese of boot skincare, really. Um, but I always grab him whenever I see him because um, he's just so interesting and has lots to, to say about ingredients and studies. And I know they did a lot of work on Haloxyl and um, it did have quite a good 
they did have really good results. So, I mean, that's quite a good all-round one as well because it's got everything from the um, protection to the environmental shield to just strengthening the skin. Um, so it's, it's good for lots of under-eye area problems. So that's it, and I hope it was useful. As I say, I really get the sense from all of these companies that they're really just starting to get their teeth into the under-eye area, that they've focused for so long on other, other problems that I think it is really the next big growth area in treatments and, and cures in a way. Uh, I know that certainly when I spoke to Dr. Tom Mamon from Clinique, he said that they've now got a team just working, a big team who are just working on eyes. That's all they have to do, just research on under eye area. And he felt that particularly with the pigmentation issue, that they're going to have a really big breakthrough within the next one to two years because they're on a real two year program there. So that'll certainly be interesting. And that's a vibe I got actually from all of the companies I spoke to that eyes is going to be the next big thing. So I um, hope that was useful. And thanks for watching.